We once heard an old preacher say, you want to know what the secret to a good marriage is? Yes, ma'am. And we were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a huge idol in our culture. The whole thing of like pleasing your wife, uh, being a servant to your wife, you know, just yes, ma'am. And a lot of people say that like happy wife, happy life. A lot of this just comes down to our cultural frame of weak men and strong women. You know, this is the feminist dream. Feminism is not about equality between the sexes. It's about an inversion. So women becoming men and then libertarianism, men becoming women. You heard a great uh, word from... Elizabeth Elliot talks about how the woman's role is to respond and how it's the man's role to initiate. And that is very clearly um, what God's design was for with Adam and Eve in the garden. And the sin came when Eve initiated and Adam responded. And we can see that today, um, that that is the main um, role and version of yeah. our culture. It's, it's our own lives that, that we've had to repent from yeah. and, and disciple out of our own upbringings in this culture. You know, for me, taught to be passive, taught to be the nice guy, uh, you know, just say yes to everyone, servant leader. Uh, you know, I've had to repent of that because that's not good for my wife. That's not good for my mission. And likewise, your for me, frame... my, it's like control the situation, make demands, um, be the one to initiate. Like that has um, been my experience. And that is what as girls were pushed into through college, like were put into a position where that's how you have to survive is yeah, by take on the masculine being the initiative person yeah. so then when you get married yeah so when we got married yeah kelly was very headstrong very uh demanding very initiative in the masculine role and here's me the nice kind passive um guy and it's like you know a lot of resentment starts building she resents me because i'm not taking the lead i'm not having a vision I resent her because it's like, why won't you just relax? Quit controlling Quit things. Quit controlling things. And, and, you know, so it's like, oh my gosh, we, we had to realize like, this is not God's way. God's way is I needed to repent of being passive, of being a libertarian, of being, well, she's her own woman. She can do what she wants. You know, as long as she's happy, it's like, no, that's, that's wrong. That's wrong. And I needed to repent of controlling and um, of being passive aggressive when I'm trying to control him into doing things instead of just praying for him. So now the frame that we find ourselves in is like, all right, Lord, what do you want us to do? And so for me, it's like, as the man, I have authority in the relationship of, I am the one who's gonna have to give account for what our marriage, for what our family, for what our life amounts to. Because Kelly, her, what she has to give an account for is did she submit to me? And did she pray for me? And did she honor me? Now, a lot of people are just, their minds exploded this. My mind would have exploded at this, like, you know, 10 years ago, like, oh, Scott, you misogynist. But it's like, no, like, there's a, there's a very real scriptural authority that, like, if I just say, well, Lord, like, she's her own thing. Like, you know, what she and the devil do in the garden is up to her and the devil. I was, you know, it's this woman you gave me, Lord. Like, <laughs> you know, and that is what so many of us do. We abdicate. And we watch her eat, you know, eat the, the fruit of becoming a man, of becoming God. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, let's see if she dies. And unfortunately, this goes all the way from family into institutions. You know, yeah. can a woman become a policeman? Can a woman become a boss babe? Can a woman become a pastor? Can a woman become a soldier? Like we're all of us guys, all of us fathers and brothers and husbands are just sitting by and being like, well, let's see. Because we're, we're afraid. We're afraid of her being upset because that's, you know, a woman gets all upset and we're like, okay, okay, as long as you're happy, what, what'll make you happy? And it's like, that is bad fatherhood. That is bad husbandry. You know, we don't, uh, we don't give in to our children's temp, uh, tantrums and we don't give in to our wives' tantrums. Yeah. I don't think you even realize that you, that's, that you have those traits until you get married mm -hmm. and then it's like a mirror <laughs> and yeah. you're like, Oh my gosh, I thought I've worked through so much. Cause yeah. I would say we did as singles, we did, we did great. We were our... sincere after the Lord. Yeah. And then you get married and it's like, Whoa, like I have a lot of work to do, yeah. but it all comes down to doing things God's ways. When you do things God's ways and when you follow God's ways, 
there is a blessing to that. And I, we've talked about this often. Most of our arguments have come from an inversion of our roles. Yeah, when me we, being weak and me, not leading. And when I'm reaching instead of responding. And so a lot of people will be like, oh, Scott, this is like, you're saying your wife is upset and that you're the perfect one. It's like, no, you don't understand. It's all from me. It starts with the man. It starts with my frame. What frame am I holding for her to fill? You know, so there's this whole kind of um, idea of a man will provide a frame and a woman will fill it. And if there's no frame, then the woman goes into chaos. There's no boundaries. There's no strength. There's no, and there's anxiety. And there's, uh, you know, where, what are we doing? What are the vision? And then that's why a woman gets into, uh, like, I'm going to reach. I'm going to provide frame. And then the guy's like, okay, it was actually a lot of hard work providing frame. I'll just fall into your frame. And so it's this thing that we're constantly having to repent of in our life of like, it's not that she's evil or that I'm evil or like, oh, it's a be- like terrible uh, marriage or terrible partnership. It's like, no, this is the struggle of our generation. This is the struggle of our culture is weak men and strong women. And to, for resources to help with this, because I feel like all we ever see is the negative picture because we're bombarded with the negative vision. We're bombarded with boss babes as the vision for women. We're bombarded with feminism. And so to read books by women that did things well, like um, Elizabeth Elliot, uh, Debbie Pearl has some great books on femininity. Lori Alexander, she has a great devotional uh, that just frames Titus 2 and goes through each of the things the older woman is supposed to teach the younger women. And to constantly get in our mindset and to be reminded of who God has called us to be, to constantly get in the word of, okay, God, who do you say I am? What are your ways? Because your ways are better than my ways. It's a constant renewing of our mind of, okay, submit. And submission doesn't look like, Elizabeth Elliot also says this, it doesn't look like doormat. Like that's the straw man too of like, oh, is your wife just a doormat? The straw man is I hate my wife. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, number one, I married her because I'm attracted to her. I love her. I want to be around her. And you like my input. Like it's not that I... you're, I have your best interests at heart. Like I don't want, if I don't want to hurt you or maim you or like, because it's like, we have to live together for the rest of our life. I want you to be, ironically, happy. I want my wife to be happy. But what makes her happy versus what the world tells us makes us happy are two different things. Mm -hmm. It's something called revealed preference and stated preference. Stated preference, you know, the world says, oh, if a woman is a boss babe, if she goes to seven years of school and gets a high paid, amazing job, she will be happy. So that's the stated preference. Revealed preference, all those women are on depression meds and alcoholics and hate their life. Mm-hmm. When actually God says, be a keeper at home, be married, have children, love your husband, honor your husband, obey your husband, that will make you happy. So that's the revealed preference. So Kelly's not a doormat. She's not just on a leash. She's my dog. I take her where I, wherever I want. I leave her. I say this, that. It's like, no, no, she's my wife. I love her. I value her input, I value her skills, I value her mind, I value her heart. Like, we have intimacy. We are one flesh. She is me, I am her. We just have two different roles to play in this oneness. So I don't put my roles on her and be like, you go be the man, you go be the boss. You know, it's like, no, like that is unfortunately heavy as the head that wears the crown. So I have to learn how to wear it. I have to learn how to be a good husband. And likewise, Kelly can trust God because God was the one who authored these systems. So if I'm being weak or if I'm being tyrannical, because I'm sure it could go both ways for Mm -hmm. a lot of people, either a a really weak husband or a really tyrannical husband. It's like for both of those, God's answer is honor, submit, pray, have a prayerful uh, response to your husband. And so this is where we want to counter the old man and our culture, the idol of our culture. The secret to a good marriage is yes, sir. So uh, a small example of this was when we were in South Africa, we had planned on moving to Florida when we got back to America. And right when we arrived to South Africa, something switched in me. And I was like, man, like, 
I feel like we're supposed to move back to where I grew up and I would really love that. And there was such a temptation to say something to Scott and tell him that. But then the other part of me, which I feel like was the Holy Spirit speaking to me, was like, just pray. Pray that, pray for him that he'll have wisdom on this and pray for him. So I did. I just prayed. I was like, God, have your way in us. Thank you for speaking to Scott. And thank you for leading him to direct our steps for this next season. And it wasn't even a week when Scott brought up to me the idea of moving back to the area that I grew up. And how much freedom is that? Like you were able to actually hear from God yourself, take the lead. And also like cool confirmation for you too. And leading is like, I was hearing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, likewise, if we were on different pages, then the biblical thing to do, God's way, would be me to still submit to Scott and still continue to pray God's will to be done in our life. And that's where we have to trust God and take him at his word that uh, when he says he's our vindicator, he is our vindicator and uh, he doesn't break his word. And so trusting him, even when you're not seeing, like that was a, that was a fast turnaround, but that's not always how it is. So to trust God and to continue to pray for your husband and to bless him and to serve him and not resent him when he's not making decisions that you think he should be doing. Yeah. Nagging was the opposite of that. And I feel like that actually puts the opposite effect on your husband to where he doesn't even want anything to do with what you're saying. Yeah. So Elizabeth Elliot also uh, says, uh, the only time you have to submit is when you don't agree. Otherwise, it's not submission. If you agree on something, then you're not submitting. Yeah. It's, it's when you disagree that as women, we were meant to submit. And when a woman submits to a man, it puts a heavy burden of performance on the man. So when my wife says to me, I don't agree with this, but I respect you and I trust you, then I go and pray to the Lord like, okay, Lord, I hope I'm doing the right thing. My wife trusts me. My wife's coming along with me. I better be doing the right thing. Like there's a burden of performance on me. Whereas if she had then, if she had instead nagged and argued and been upset and all that stuff, instead of me going to the Lord and being like, Lord, I better be right about this. I dig in and I'm like, I'm right. You're wrong. I resent, Lord, this woman you gave me is fighting me. I'm going to prove her wrong, blah, 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 all this stuff. It's like, those are the two dynamics that happen. When you are, when you submit, it puts a burden of performance on the man to protect because it's like, she's coming along out of trust for me. Yeah. And I, I need to honor that. Whereas when there's disobedience, fighting, it's like, then there's resentment going both ways. And now you're in a doom loop. Yeah. You know, we've been in that place in our marriage of like, yeah. you are... Uh, disrespecting me I'm not loving you yep. and we're just like in this doom loop eventually it just gets to the point where it's like neither of us are liking this let's Lord help <laughs> like Lord help us and you know let's break this cycle and repent we mean this to say there is a way God's ways are better than our ways and God's ways are for the man to take authority take leadership take action take direction mm -hmm. And for the lady to submit to that and be a help me to that and to pray for that. And I feel like a lot of times in um, Christian circles to even talk about these things, because you don't want to talk about arguing with your husband uh, to other people. I don't think that that's wise. But then you have the people who are like, we've never had an argument in our life. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh gosh, like, are we even Christians? <laughs> <laughs> we have. And it's like, okay, because we Must weren't be nice. <laughs> we weren't raised in the perfect world to understand how to enter marriage. Like Scott said in another video, like we just kind of like fell into this in our learning and praise God for the Holy Spirit leading and directing our steps. But we can say when we're obedient to his ways and to his word, there is peace in our marriage. Yeah. So another thing just from this video is not to be like, see, you need to submit yeah. and then or for you to come to me and be like, see, you need a lead. Like initiate. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. We, t we, we take this to God and we, this is a me thing. It's not a her thing. I need to become strong. I need to pray to the Lord that he would help me to say no when she is upset and to hold my frame. If she doesn't like something that I think God is calling us to do, I need to ask the Lord, Lord, help me build momentum on my mission to go hard after my mission that my, my wife would come along as a help meet on this. And then likewise, 
I pray to the Lord that Lord help me to serve my husband in his mission. Help me to see how I can serve him. Help me to um, hold my tongue (laughs) when I don't want to hold my tongue. Help me to honor my husband with my thoughts and with my actions. Yeah. So praise God. Bless you guys. And we just hope this was a good uh, encouragement for your role as a man or as a woman in your marriage. And we bless your marriages and those of you who are single, uh, we bless your future husband or wife. Amen.